And then the second phase of success is everyone telling you that you're wrong. Like it goes from you're crazy to you're wrong. And, and that happened when I left, like on January 1st. Everybody got really scared that I was gonna like, that something horrible was gonna happen to me because I'm alone and I'm a female. Um, and so my family kind of like took that direction, like you're, like you're gonna die out there, don't do it. And it was like, you're wrong, like this is not a good idea. But I did it anyway, like keep persevering, you know, despite, um, and then the third phase of success is like, you know you've made it when everybody goes, oh, we always knew you could do it, you know? Like, so first they tell you you're crazy, then they tell you you're wrong, and then they go, oh, we knew you could do it the whole time, you know? And that's where I'm at now. Like, that's, I, I got to that point. And it was actually, I think it happened after like 15 or 20 weeks when everybody was like, there was like kind of no doubt at that point, like how did I go from 83 bucks and a dream to, um, to 20 states into it and like approaching the halfway mark everybody like, all my friends and family then they all kind of just started showing up and being like oh yeah like this makes sense this you know we knew that this was going to happen and so now they're all very cool with it and that's it's really cool they're very very supportive and I really couldn't ask for a better support team at home now so it's, it's awesome any other questions before I start yeah yeah, Alaska is really cool. Um, that's actually a really interesting story. No, a complete stranger. Um, I didn't know how I was going to do it because if you if you look at it, like it takes so long to drive to Alaska that like I have one week in each state, so I have like a really short amount of time, and I wasn't sure like how do I drive all the way there and then all the way back and like actually have any time to do anything there. I had no idea how it was going to work, and then after about 15 or or 17 weeks of the project. A random stranger contacted me online and said um, said that he wanted to donate his frequent flyer miles so that I could get to Alaska, and so that's what he did. And like, I, I was kind of like, yeah, right. And then all of a sudden, he called me up and he was like, uh, "I have your ticket. You're leaving in July." <laughs> and I, I mean, I've, I've, I don't think I've I've ever been as blown away by just like a single act of kindness that was probably one of the coolest experiences in my entire life. Alaska is amazing. If you ever get the opportunity to go, definitely do. Mm-hmm. Hawaii, it was, right, Hawaii was like the biggest, like, well, it was really crazy because when I first left, like, I will, I will say this, um, and you can take it for, for however you want to take it, but I really felt like this was a divinely inspired trip. Like, I, I felt like it was too clever for me to have come up with it myself, if that makes sense. Um, so when I had like what I would call like the vision for this project, um, everybody's question was Alaska and Hawaii. Like, how are you gonna get to Alaska and Hawaii? And it was probably like my biggest concern, but I chose to like not think about it because I was like, I, I felt like God told me to do this, and I felt like God told me to do 50 states in 50 weeks, not 48 and 48. So I just wasn't going to question it. It was 50 and 50, period, and it would figure itself out as it went. And then all of a sudden, this ticket for Alaska showed up, and I was like, ta-da, and then, <laughs> that's amazing. And then, like, a few weeks ago, about five weeks ago, um, a couple people that I met online, because I'm on Facebook and Twitter, like, I'm, I rock social media because I, I think it's a great... Um, it's a great tool in, in this sort of situation. So people that I met on Twitter and Facebook all got together and we did fundraisers and they got me a ticket to Hawaii. So like I left it to be the last date when I was planning because I was uh, that was the one that was like the big if. So I'm actually going in December and it's the last date from from the 10th to the 17th. So it's awesome. Any other questions? Is that two? Okay, let me get him real quick. Go ahead. Over Thanksgiving, well, I'm not sure actually. Like, I don't, I kind of don't think about it too far in advance. It's funny because, like, if you can imagine, like, you have this big idea for next year. Like, imagine like 2011. Like, you were gonna take on something like this, and then you said, like, would you plan every day of a whole year? Like, <laughs> we don't do that. We we might plan like what's gonna happen next weekend, but we don't plan like an entire year of our lives. So I really didn't think about it. I was just like, I'll figure that as I go. And that has worked really well. I usually think about each state um, the night before I cross state lines. I like get out the map and I'm like, what should I do while I'm here? You know, I don't think about it until the, the week before. So, um, like, I had no idea what I was going to do for my birthday. Like, I was just like, I was kind of, you know, being negative. And I was like, mm, I don't know if this is going to work, like, on my birthday on the road. But 
it's, it's just one birthday. I was like, it doesn't matter what happens. It'll still be, it'll be fun somehow or another. And then now I have a cake. Like, could it be any cooler than that? I don't know. And you guys all sing me happy birthday. So see, it all works out. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do for, for Thanksgiving yet, but I'm sure it'll be good. There'll be like a surrogate family somewhere, even if it's on the street somewhere. Does anybody else have a question? About at that time? Okay, cool. So I'm going to tell you just like a couple crazy things that happened. Well, I'm going to start, this one doesn't have a picture, but I really want to tell this story because it kind of wraps up in North Carolina, which makes it awesome. So my, like before I started, I built this website in November because I was like, if I'm going to do something this crazy, I need to tell people about it and see, just see what happens, see what kind of reactions I get. So I built this website and I like told people on it what I wanted to do and I put an email address on it. And by the way, like up here, there's business cards, and the business cards have like my email and my Facebook and my website and stuff like that, because I'd love for you guys to introduce yourselves if I don't get the chance to meet you. Um, so snag one of those if you want. But um, like I got an email from a lady in November. Thank you. <laughs> in November, I got an email. So I hadn't left yet. It was just the vision. And I got an email from a lady who lived in South Carolina, and she said, that her son was homeless in California. And he was like 24 and homeless in California. And that she hadn't heard from him in like five years. And I don't know why she, she thought to do this, but she asked me if I could find her son. In Cal when I get like, when you get to California, can you try to find my son? Like this was the email I read. And I was like, this is the craziest request I've ever gotten in my life. Like how do you find one homeless person? in an entire, especially the state of California, like that's not a little state, you know? And I thought that this was crazy, but it just, it really, like, I didn't answer her for a couple days, I thought about it, you know? And even as crazy as I thought it was, I mean, I was kind of looking at my life, I'm like 50 states in 50 weeks is pretty crazy, so why not, you know, give it a shot? So I, I emailed her back and I said, I'll give it 24 hours, and that's it. I'll give it, to, all I can do is give it 24 hours to look for this kid, and then if I haven't found him by the end of 24 hours, I'm just going to kind of wash my hands of it, and it'll be, it'll, I'll just have to walk away, you know? Um, well, she emailed me back a few weeks later, because I still had, like, um, a couple months before I was going to be in California. She emailed me back a few weeks later, and she said that the last time she had heard from him was in Santa Cruz, which is a little town just south of San Francisco. So I said, okay, I have a starting point, you know? So I get on Facebook, and I start, um, like, seeking out people in the Santa Cruz, San Francisco area. And her and I, her name was Lori, um, this kid's mom. Lori and I found this lady named Ronnie that works as a homeless outreach worker in Santa Cruz. So she is like out on the streets daily, like passing out socks, socks are her big thing. And so she passes out socks and just like builds relationships and builds friendships. So I started talking to her on Facebook and, um, you know, even even then, we were all like, this is a, a whole town of people, and there's like a huge homeless population in Santa Cruz. And Ronnie said that she thought that she had seen him at some point. And so um, we were passing around pictures of him and stuff. Well, when I got to California, um, I went to Santa Cruz, and I got there at like 6 in the morning, and I said, okay, I'm, this is my one day to find Trey. His name was Trey. I said, this is my one day to find him. And so I called Ronnie, and I was like, meet me somewhere, you know. And we, we decided to meet at, like, a little corner cafe in downtown. And so I had never met this lady before. I'd been talking to her online for all these weeks, and it was, it was kind of weird to just walk up and say hi. But, we sat, you know, we sat down, and she ordered a cup of tea. And we started talking about her life as an outreach worker and what it's like to distribute socks and why socks are she really enlightened me to the whole sock thing this was california was my 11th state so it was like a big deal and then um so as we were talking and and she was telling me how she kind of ended up in this situation i'm not even kidding as we're talking trey walks right by our table <laughs> 